tonight. Governor Cuomo stands defiant as Democratic Party leaders, including President Biden and House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, call on him to resign. In the meantime, state lawmakers have also sped up their wide-ranging impeachment inquiry. State investigators say they have evidence Governor Cuomo harassed at least 11 women. Here's New York Attorney General Letitia James. Governor Cuomo sexually harassed current and former state employees in violation of both federal and state laws. None of this would have been illuminated if not for the heroic women who came forward. And I am inspired by all the brave women who came forward. But more importantly, I believe them. Mm. Now, Governor Cuomo fired back in his own tape statement. Here's what he had to say. I want you to know directly from me that I never touched anyone inappropriately or made inappropriate sexual advances. That is just not who I am. And that's not who I have ever been. I accept responsibility. And we are making changes. Now, today, news broke that a Cuomo aide has filed a criminal complaint with the Albany County Sheriff's Department. Josh, I want to come to you. Talk a bit about what the New York Attorney General says she found in her investigation. And also, I'm wondering, what's the latest on whether or not the governor could face charges? So the New York Attorney General found 11 women uh, who she deemed, and her investigators, two outside investigators, to all be credible, who, who accused the governor of sexual misconduct that ranged from forcibly groping a woman under a shirt to touching women inappropriately uh, to sexual comments. Uh, you know, a whole range of conduct uh, is what she found. And she did 179 interviews. She interviewed everyone in the governor's inner circle. She interviewed a, a lot of these women. She found contemporaneous notes uh, from a lot of these women where they told others about it at the time, and it was a, it was a pretty damning portrait. And what we found out uh, is yesterday, uh, the executive assistant, one of the women, uh, anonymous woman in the complaint, uh, has gone to the Albany County DA and filed a a criminal complaint about uh, the governor, you know, allegedly uh, uh, groping her. And the the district attorney has said that they found that allegation to be credible. And you have multiple other district attorneys in various parts of the state, in Manhattan and Westchester, mm -hmm. looking uh, at this evidence that's been compiled by Tish James' team to figure out if there are other criminal uh, investigations that will go forward. And the governor, he emerged as a sort of Democratic star during the pandemic, but now his legacy is in tatters. Talk a bit about how his handling of this reveals his character um, and what it, what it means, and, and, and talk a little bit about who the governor is. Well, he's been incredibly pugilistic in refusing to resign. You have Biden, Pelosi, all of the Democratic Party chairs, the chair of a, of a Democratic state party that he appointed, uh, even his lieutenant governor criticizing him. I mean, there's no one left in New York politics or national Democratic politics who have defended him this week. And he has stayed ensconced in his mansion, refusing to resign, thinking he can fight back, thinking mm -hmm. he can somehow fend off impeachment. Uh, the governor has always uh, engendered a brutal workforce, a toxic place, a really tough place to work. And he's always believed uh, in his own uh, his own willingness to, his own ability to, to maneuver out of tough situations and his own ability to convince people that he's right. And here, you have really an unparalleled situation for, for Governor Cuomo, uh, you know, who, as you said, you know, at the height of last spring was kind of the national... Uh, elixir to many Democrats of COVID and was kind of the contrast to Trump. And, mm -hmm. and now it's totally different. Mm -hmm. And Lisa, build on that. Um, Governor Cuomo has a, has a number of things, number of problems that are involved in this, um, invest, in, in this impeachment investigation. Talk a bit about that. And can he actually beat this? Can his legal team, is he viable still? Well, I think it's first important to really reflect on who the governor is. It's not just that he was a hero, of course, during the pandemic for a lot of Democrats, which he was. They saw him as this white knight who was going to come in and save the country from COVID. He is someone who is from one of the most storied political legacies in, in American politics. His father, of course, was a major player in the Democratic Party, also a New York governor. Uh, Andrew Cuomo was in the uh, Bill Clinton's cabinet. He's an he was he was an advisor of sorts to uh, President Biden. So this is not just sort of some random Democrat, right? This is someone who is one of the most prominent Democratic family names in the country. 
And that's why it was so striking to see the speed at which Democrats moved to, to really dump him and say he has to resign. And yeah. as Josh pointed out, it was everyone from the president on down. Um, he and I should just, no if I could interrupt you a bit, the, this is a political dynasty ending, right? Could, this, could he actually yes. survive this? I mean, it's really hard to see, but it's also not impossible. I think the strategy right now is to buy time. Uh, the state assembly has indicated that they want to move quickly uh, on um, on moving forward with impeachment. There really isn't much precedent for doing an impeachment there in, in the modern era. And there is some disagreement within the assembly over the scope of that. Initially, their impeachment was going to have a much broader scope than just this, uh, this sexual harassment. Uh, and now there's some disagreement whether they should narrow that to move quickly. Uh, you, we've seen that his lawyers came out today and really have mounted this ferocious defense. And I, I think most Democrats want to sort of limit the political damage to the Democratic Party by getting him out as quickly as possible. And clearly, that is not the strategy that he has in mind. It is really hard to see how he could be politically viable mm -hmm. um, to run for that fourth term. That's been his goal for so long, because, of course, that's something his father was unable to achieve. Yeah. Uh, and early polling, we don't have much yet, has shown that Democratic voters really don't want to see him do that. Something like 75% of Democrats in the state of New York would prefer somebody else runs for governor. Yeah. yeah. And Leanne, I want to come to you. Uh, there's this idea that he is, of course, being defiant. Lisa just talked about, about the political damage this could mean for Democrats. What does it mean for Democrats that he refuses to resign? And I should also say, what are Republicans doing? How are they squaring going after Cuomo when obviously there are a lot of them who are supporting former President Trump who faced allegations of rape, sexual assault, sexual abuse? Absolutely. There's one thing about Democrats in this case that you can't say all the time is that Democrats are at least being consistent on the issue. They start on the issue of sexual harassment, the sexual assault started with Al Franken during the Me Too movement, and they have been consistent regardless of party. And you cannot say the same for the Republican Party, who was silent amidst these allegations of the former president. And so the Democratic Party wants to get rid of the governor, and they are washing their hands of him. Mm -hmm. They're washing their hands of him. I mean, that's absolutely true. They are Democratic Party, as well as Republicans, also are, are in some ways seeking to, to, to really um, see this as a political benefit for them. But it's, a, I think, a really, really challenging um, thing to walk, <laughs> is, is one way to put it, when you have Republicans who are still sticking by the former president.